It's so important to honor the memories of September 11th, 2001, because doing so helps us transform the pain of the past into healing and hope for the future. Today, we honor the 20th anniversary of a day that changed our world profoundly. We remember beloved alumni who died tragically. And we remember how the events of this day continue to reverberate through our world and the life of Susquehanna. So it was a Tuesday, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, at least when I was on campus, um, the if you didn't have the early 8 a.m. class, the next class was 10 o'clock. And so I think I had probably gone to the gym that morning. I lived right next to it, went for breakfast in the cafeteria, and then came back, and I was getting ready for class. I had you know, the morning news on on NBC, and I was getting ready. It was sort of playing in the background. And after the first plane hit, you know, there was sort of breaking news and they were, they had quickly got cameras on the scene. And, you know, when it was first being reported, it sounded like it was an accident and maybe just, you know, the pilot got confused or something had happened. No one really knew. And so, you know, your eyes kind of get glued. This is a pre-smartphone. So what we did then was um, AOL Instant Messenger. And so you start IMing your friends and kind of saying, you know, what's going on? Are you watching the news? And so I was watching the news and saw the second plane hit the towers. Reporters were starting to suggest that something was really wrong. And of course, you kind of get that sinking feeling. You know, I didn't really know what to do. And so I thought, well, I guess the next thing I'll do is just go to class. And so as it, um, the case was, I had a political science class that morning at 10 o'clock with Dr. Blessing. He was known for being pretty serious um, and never canceling class. So I figured, okay, I'll go and show up. And the political science department had a small television. And so Dr. Blessing was kind of popping in and out of the, the classroom and going to check the TV to see what was being reported. And so he came back into the class and I I will always remember sort of abruptly said, you know, everyone close your books, go home, turn on your televisions, the Twin Towers have collapsed. And it was very somber and you kind of knew immediately that something um, was really wrong. And so that's what we did, just kind of all filed out of the class in silence and went back and turned on our televisions to see what was happening. Having done 40 years of firefighting work over the years, all of those things that I used to see and do, large fires, pulling bodies out of fires, cutting people out of cars, going to huge wrecks on the highway, never ever prepared me for this type of incident. The incident was overwhelming to say the least. Um, the things we saw, the things we did, uh, the things we saw other people do was truly overwhelming. On our way in on the night of September 12th, we went down the Palisades Parkway, which uh, eventually connects with I-95 and the George Washington Bridge. There was absolutely no one on the road. And when we got to the George Washington Bridge, there were no toll takers. There wasn't a single car on that bridge. And for anybody that knows New York City, that's a very, very rare occasion. One of the guys that uh, I'm very good friends with, he came upon a scene while he was tunneling. The story he tells is that he came upon a scene where buried into the slurry wall was a firefighter with four women and he had them all in his arms and they were all still together. So when, it, when the building came down, he grabbed them and they tried to ride it out. Obviously they didn't make it. But those are the stories that stick in your head. It was a time where everybody acted as one. Um, we were there uh, to recover, um, and everybody had your back. I don't think I've ever seen the country like that. Um, and I don't know if I'll ever see it again like that. It was an amazing 
thing that we saw with everybody coming together. He was a son, right? He was a son to my parents. He was a brother to us. He was, he was a family man. He was a Jeff fan. He was a, a fierce competitor, right? He wanted to win. He wanted to win at every level. With Susquehanna, I think his team might have gone, I don't know if it went the farthest out of any team, but they had a really good run. You know, we talked about it. He was the life of the party. He, he, he brought people together. He was the baby, right? He was five years younger than me, seven years younger than, than my older brother. Being the baby, kind of everybody looked out for him. And I think as he got older, he kind of flipped the switch. He looked out for everybody. You know, Gary got married first, had my nephew Matthew, and you know, as happy as everybody was, I think Chris was just, the concept of, of him being an uncle, he took it very seriously. He spoiled these kids. He was just whatever they wanted, whatever, whenever he saw the kids, he would, he would give them something. The smile on his face and, and just the, the joy that they brought to him, it was nice that, that somebody was giving it back to him because that's really what he liked to do for everybody else. He had a relationship with my mother that was just, it was, it was beyond a mother-son relationship. I mean, he was the baby, we talked about that, but, you know, as much as she looked after him, I think in his mind, especially after my father passed away, I think he took it upon himself to make sure that my mother was okay. He was always there for her, always there for her as, as she was always there for him. He called her every day. I mean, there wasn't a day that went by that he didn't talk to her. You know, the one person that he talked to on 9-11 was my mother. You know, I didn't get through to him, Gary didn't get through to him, but he made one call to tell her, you know, I'm okay, I'm on the 92nd floor, we're gonna try to get out. I mean, he would, he would go into work early, just based on what he did. <clears throat> and I would take the ferry, right? I would literally take the ferry right past the World Trade Center. And, you know, I looked up, there was a hole in the building, I knew it was his building, and I started calling him, and I guess at that point the phones were out. They hit the other, the other building got hit and everybody was freaking out and running and I just, I just ran towards it. And, uh, you know, I never got there and I got around it, watched him come down and just, just hoped that he got out and unfortunately he didn't make it out. So, that was a rough one, that was a rough day. I married into the family, so I first met Colleen when she was about 10 years old. That's when I first got to know her. 10-year-old Colleen, wow, she was very active. She was happy. Uh, she smiled all the time, which was something that just continued her entire life. And if you see any photos of Colleen, uh, 99 times out of 100, she's got a big, beautiful smile. She used to like to dress up and put on different performances and plays and dances, and uh, God bless Nathan, he was willing to go along with being dressed up, uh, sometimes even as a little girl. We have such great memories of holidays at the Sapinski's home in Easton, uh, Pennsylvania, and you know Colleen in the thick of everything with her mom in the kitchen, in the dining room, in the living room, everybody just doing everything together. Uh, Colleen and, and her dad, Stephen, you know, just, just the same. What a, you know, remarkable relationship. You knew how much they loved each other and everything that they did. Uh, Colleen's relationship with uh, her brothers, both uh, Ben and Nathan, was extraordinary. They were so, so uh, very, very close with each other. Um, you know, I would hear stories about them picking up the phone and calling um, each other. Um, every day and leaning on each other for support uh, and, and obviously doing things together as, as a family. They were, um, you know, great siblings uh, together. A couple nights ago, uh, Mary and I were together with uh, Colleen's parents, Noreen and Stephen, and um, we were having a glass of wine. Stephen and I were smoking a cigar. And we were talking about Colleen because, you know, the uh, 20th anniversary is just coming up. And uh, Stephen asked the question, where do you think Colleen would be right now? 
And um, Mary was very quick to say, oh, she would be living somewhere in New Jersey, like in Montclair. She'd be married. She'd have a great family and great kids. She'd still have that beautiful smile on her face. And she'd be involved with everyone in her family and, you know, be living a really happy, happy life. That never happened. Um, so we keep her memory alive by doing things like this. Um, by talking about her, by toasting her, and by telling stories. There's a lot of stories depending upon which of her cousins or her aunts or uncles or high school friends or college friends or KD sisters that you speak to. And the one thing that is great is we all love sharing those stories about Colleen. I'd like to say that I had the most special relationship with him, but I think Anybody that you talk to would say that they had a special relationship with him. My older brother, you know, the older brother looks after the younger brothers. I really think that he wanted to be just like Gary. You know, he's successful, he's a big guy, he's, you know, loving family, loving wife. I mean, he, he had a special relationship with Gary. He had a special relationship with my wife, Michelle, right? They, they were, you know, Michelle was like a sister to him. His friends, Timmy and Christy, and Larry and Christine, and Rick and Kristen, and Eamon and Allie. I mean, all of these guys, they all just, they all gravitated towards him. And each and every one of them had a special relationship. I don't know if you remember this or not, but they were doing these, you know, memorials after a couple weeks when, you know, if they couldn't find somebody. People would do these... I guess kind of ceremonies and you know I'll never forget we we had ours for Chris the night of the uh, the ceremony that we had for him chief of police in Demarest came to our house and uh, notified us that they had found him and uh, obviously the whole day was sad but you know, knowing that they found him and, and, you know, we could do a proper burial and that, take it for what it was, but it was, it was, it was good that we had that. And, and you know, it's good for my mom. You know, 20 years later, it, it's still a really hard day for the entire family. Um, pockets of us, depending upon where we live, always try to get together and be together. Um, so that we can be together with family. You know, one of the great ways that uh, Colleen's family and friends um, have uh, remembered Colleen is by doing things in the community so that she lives on forever. Um, she graduated from Notre Dame High School in um, Easton, or the greater Easton area, I think it's Forks Township. And um, there's a bench there uh, with her name on it. Uh, and uh, whenever I've been by, uh, there's always fresh flowers. I don't know who's putting the fresh flowers there, but someone is to remember Colleen. And I know that, um, you know, this uh, weekend at 9-11, there'll be lots of fresh flowers there. Twenty years later, it's still hard to make sense of. You know, how could uh, this level of hatred exist in our world? And how could that happen without our knowledge? No matter the length of time since it happened, it's just, it's hard to make sense of it. The events of 9-11, um, it have changed me. I know it's changed my family. Um, all the guys and girls that I was there with, their lives have all been changed. You don't take life as lightly. Um, you always say, I love you. Um, different things like that. He healing wise, you know, obviously, I think we've all healed a little bit, some more than others, um, but it's always gonna be there. Um, and every day, Every day I think about it. Obviously, I lost friends on 9-11, um, and I continue to lose friends uh, to various diseases due to 9-11. All those people are in my heart, as well as Chris and Colleen and their families. They are always going to be in my heart. As we've heard, the events of September 11th 
live on in the stories we continue to carry in our hearts. They also live on as we hear in them a calling to transform the grief and loss of that day into a renewed commitment in our own small way to making the world a better place for everyone.